What's going on, YouTube? This is Sonic Mix, and today I'm going to do something that I haven't done in quite a while, as a matter of fact. I'm going to give my preview of WWE SummerSlam 2014. Upon the recording of this video, SummerSlam is tomorrow night. Today's August 16th. It will be tomorrow, August 17th. And looking at the card, it looks pretty good. I would say maybe a C plus, maybe hopefully a B minus overall show. Uh, before I actually get into the matches, I know you guys have probably been wondering where I've been. Um, I had an issue with the webcam, like for some reason, because I'm using my webcam. It wasn't letting me like log in through my webcam, but I was able to figure out why I wasn't able to log in through it. So I figured that out. And on top of that, I've just been working. Work has been pretty busy for the most part. Haven't really been watching the pay-per-views. Uh, so far, the pay-per-views I've been watching this year so far has been the Rumble, WrestleMania, Money in the Bank, Battleground, and SummerSlam, which I will be seeing with a couple of my buddies. <clears throat> tomorrow, and everything else has been going all right. But without further ado, we're, we don't we don't want to keep talking about that. Let's get down to the review. Uh, for my previews, I am just going to give my thought on the match, how I think it's going to be good, and who I think is going to win. So, in the kickoff match, for those that have the WWE Network, you will see this. If not, if you just order it through your regular network provider, which I can still do that. Uh, you may be able to watch it. You probably wouldn't because I order Battleground through the regular provider and I wasn't able to watch the kickoff. But anywho, uh, let's just get right back. Whoa, a little bit bright there. Uh, anyway, let's get right back. So, the kickoff is going to be Rob Van Dam versus Cesaro. I think it's going to be a good match for a kickoff match, but it's probably not going to be anything spectacular, but you know, it's such a shame in a way how Cesaro, this Cesaro, had the biggest moment ever in WrestleMania, this past WrestleMania 30, and for what many people thought him being with Paul Heyman was going to be the greatest thing ever, turned out to be the worst thing ever. I mean, this guy should have been a main eventer right now. This should have been the guy that was going after Daniel Bryan at Extreme Rules, not Kane at Extreme Rules. Which actually, on a top note, this is the second time that a loser that has lost his match at WrestleMania would fight the champion the next pay-per-view after. Doesn't make sense. Shouldn't it be the winner, not the loser? But other than that, I think it's going to be a good match. I don't see, like, a four-star match or anything. But I, I think it'll be enjoyable to watch for the kickoff. But once again, probably nothing too special. Uh, Cesaro lost his match to Swagger this past Monday Night Raw. Um, I see Rob Van Dam winning this. I don't know why I say Van Dam. I, I think the reason why I say Van Dam is because Cesaro lost this past Monday, and I think it kind of would make sense in a way if Rob Van Dam won this match. So I'm going to say Rob Van Dam to win the match. And then the opening match, I think, will be The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship. Which, unfortunately, the title doesn't mean anything, which is pretty sad. But anyway, I think it's going to be a good match. I'm not sure this could be the opener, but just talk about the match just in general. I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be a nice pace, nice mediocre movement of the match. Probably, probably this match will be given maybe at least 10, I'm hoping maybe 12 minutes. Just let these guys go out there. And not so much steal the show, but put on like a good three-star match. Which I think this match will be a three-star match regardless. In the end, I see The Miz winning because now with this new gimmick that he has, this new Hollywood gimmick that he has, 
Now this is basically his new gig, so they want to build up his new gimmick to make him become like this star, I guess you could say. I don't know, I haven't been really been into the gimmick. Maybe it'll catch on to me if The Miz gets a nice push, but if The Miz was going to get a push, it would have been three years ago when he was in the main event at WrestleMania 27. But I don't think he'll never get that push again. So I'm going to say The Miz retains the title. Uh, up next, I believe, will probably be Jack Swagger versus Rusev in a flag match. I'm actually interested in the storyline of this. Although it is very controversial, and I know some people may say, oh, they're going like over the edge because they're talking about personal things, which I can understand that, but let's think about this. The reason why I like this storyline is because it's been serious. There's been no comedy. There's been no stupid things. It's been a serious rivalry, which I like. I like because something like this should be serious. Not like uh, that whole Del Rio versus Swagger back at WrestleMania 29 where they were talking about with when Zeb Coulter was the heel, and he was talking about how, like, the Mexicans would sneak across our borders and this and that. Those first two weeks were good, but then all of a sudden, the Del Rio swagger turned into a comedy sitcom, and it just went completely downhill from there. So I like the storyline for this. Match-wise, the match at Battleground wasn't all that good. It was okay, but it wasn't okay if that makes any sense if this is going to be the last time they fight i would hope it would be good maybe hopefully uh in the end i see swagger winning by submission and then this will end the winning streak of rusev so i think rusev will suffer his first loss at SummerSlam. so i'm gonna say jack swagger wins the match in this one uh, up next, I'm going to say Chris Jericho versus Bray Wyatt. Now, their match at Battleground was a disappointment. I was very disappointed. I actually thought it was going to be good, but once again, it turned out just to be okay, maybe slightly below okay. But I'm hoping this is going to be a good match. But if it's going to be slow paced like how it was at Battleground, I don't think this match isn't going to be all that good. It should be all right, but I'm hoping it'll be good. At least that's all I hope. Uh, in the end, I see Bray Wyatt winning because Chris Jericho won at Battleground, so it'll only make sense for Bray Wyatt to win this match. So I'm going to say Bray Wyatt over Jericho. Uh, let's see, what do I think will be next? I think up next will probably be AJ Lee versus Paige. Storyline has been interesting, but unfortunately, I feel like this is going to be treated as the bathroom break. Although, you know, I kind of feel like they're not really giving AJ Lee and Paige the time to, like, go out there and be at their best. Because, unfortunately, there's another match that is bigger than this match, so this is probably why this match is getting pushed to the curve, and they're probably going to only go out there for like five minutes, and it's probably not going to be all that great, but in the end, I see AJ Lee retaining the title, and not sure when she might lose it, it will be pretty hard to tell when she's probably going to lose it, but AJ Lee, I'm going to say will retain. Up next, I think, will probably be the Lumberjack match. Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins in a Lumberjack match. Now, I would have been interested in this match if it hadn't been for the Lumberjack match. Now, with the Lumberjack situation, it limits what they can do. Like if this, like I was hoping this would be a no holds bar match because if this was a no holds bar match, this would probably would be the show stealer of the night. They could just go out there and just tear the house down, and they could probably pull off like this 
magnificent four-star match, but unfortunately, I feel like we're probably going to only get like a 3.5 out of 5 match, which is still good, but it's only like 60% out of 100% of their full potential. I want to see their 100% full potential. I just want to see these guys just go out there and just beat the crap out of each other and not have the Lumberjacks interfere. But in the end, I see Seth Rollins winning, and I hope he doesn't lose this, because I hope they don't do the whole, hey, I won the Money in the Bank briefcase, now I'm going to start losing matches like they did with Dolph Ziggler and Damian Sandals. And now with only one title, they have to make the Money in the Bank briefcase winner look so incredible. So I'm going to say Seth Rollins wins the match. Up next, I think, will be Roman Reigns versus Randy Orton. This is probably going to be a solid match. I think this will be a good, excellent, solid match. Probably a 3.5, maybe close to a 4-star match. And I think this is going to be the match that will give Roman Reigns the big push. I think this is the starting point to where Roman Reigns will start being built more up and up and up until he finally becomes the next big thing, like the next John Cena. Hopefully he won't turn into a John Cena. I'm hoping and praying that he won't be a John Cena. So I think as long as Roman Reigns keeps his badass gimmick, I think people will cheer for him like The Rock and Hulk Hogan, like how they got cheered back in their prime, and they never got booed unless they actually turned heel. But nonetheless, I think it's going to be a good match, should be an interesting match. Roman Reigns picks up the victory in this one. Now, the other women's match that I was talking about, because AJ Lee and Paige's match was going to get thrown to the curve. Brie Bella versus Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie McMahon's first match in, like, I think it's like 13 years, I think. Maybe 12 years. If somebody knows, actually, leave it in the comment box. Now, story-wise has been... It's been good. It's actually been very interesting for a Divas segment. Now, the match... If, now, I know back years ago... Stephanie McMahon was actually all right. I, I thought she was a all right competitor. Brie Bella, she's just not that good, and she's a bad actress. And I, I think Brie Bella is like one of those divas that you will never take seriously. She will never be like that China or that Lita, where you could take that diva so seriously, and you could take her as a threat. Brie Bella, she will never be a threat, nor she will ever will be. The match, I don't think it's not going to be good. I mean, maybe Stephanie may try to make the match good, but I think in the end, this isn't a bathroom break, because I think something interesting will indeed happen in this match. So I think people will actually will sit tight to see what the hell will happen in this match. So it does has an interesting factor, but match factor, not so much. In the end, I see Stephanie McMahon winning this. I'm actually hoping Stephanie McMahon wins this. I'm really hoping. And there's been rumors speculating that Karma may come back or Nikki Bella may betray Brie and give Stephanie the win. So, we'll see what happens. So, I'm, I'm actually hoping Stephanie McMahon wins this. Because I, I, I was never a fan of the Bella Trends, nor their acting, nor their wrestling. So, Stephanie McMahon, I hope she wins. And then finally, finally, the biggest fight of the summer, as they're calling it, the champ Versus the Beast. John Cena versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. If this is going to be anything like their Extreme Rules match back a couple years ago, this match will be 
awesome. I'm actually hoping this would be a brutal match. And I'm actually hoping that there will be blood in this match. Because this is a blooded feud. you got to have blood. Because in that Extreme Rules match, that match was so brutal that both Brock and Cena were both cut it open. And there was blood in that match. And I was actually there at the All-State Arena for that 2012 Extreme Rules match. I think it's going to be physical. And I'm, at, I'm, I'm hoping it's not going to be one-sided. I hope that Brock Lesnar just doesn't 90% of the match beats John Cena. I hope it's an even Steven fight. And I'm just hoping that it's even Steven, it's entertaining, it's brutal, it gets you on the edge of your seat, and it's just that holy shit moment. That's all I'm hoping that this match will be for. You just get that oh my god moment. And at the end of the day, no matter who wins, you just say, wow, that was an amazing match. But I have to say Brock Lesnar is going to win this because he's coming off the biggest win in his career, beating the streak of The Undertaker at WrestleMania. And you have to make Brock Lesnar as this incredible competitor, this incredible dominant mercenary beast. And if you make Brock Lesnar lose to Cena, and Cena becomes the one that beat it the one, then this it all basically comes crumbling down for Brock Lesnar. Pretty much, just to sum it up, his win against The Undertaker would not mean nothing if John Cena beat it him. Because if somebody should beat Brock Lesnar, it should be a young guy, like a Roman Reigns or a Daniel Bryan. Somebody young and somebody that's going to be huge maybe two, three, four years from now on. So Brock Lesnar, I am going to say, will become the victor in this match. Alright, with that being said, this was my preview of WWE SummerSlam 2014. I will be giving my review right after the show is over, so stick around for that. Hope you guys enjoy my preview. Tell me in the comment box who you think might win in all of the matches that we have for SummerSlam. And until then, ladies and gentlemen, you have a good one, and I will see you later.